All right, let's talk about junctional rhythms. A junctional rhythm is a rhythm that originates below the atrium. So we know that atrium is what uh, what creates a SA node, right? Or that uh, the atrium has the SA node and that's what creates that P wave. A junctional rhythm starts below that, meaning there's gonna be no P wave. And if there is a P wave, it's going to be inverted or upside down, okay? So this is all this is all occurring at the AV node, which is right here in the middle. We just talked about this as stimulus is generated lower in the atrium and transmits electrical impulse upward. Uh, the P wave will no longer appear upright, right? It's either going to be inverted, such as in this little picture here, or there's going to be no P wave. It's hidden. All right. That's the rules. Let me repeat the rules. This is going to look just like sinus. It's going to be narrow complex. All right, narrow complex QRS complexes, but you're gonna have an inverted P wave or no P wave at all. That's all it means. Don't, con don't make this more confusing than it needs to be. The difference between junctional rhythm and sinus is that there's no P wave or it's just inverted. That's it. Still looks kind of normal. All right, we're gonna be talking about PJCs. We're gonna be talking about junctional escape, accelerated junctional, junctional tack, and we have to talk about SVT, which we kind of already hit on. All right, PJC. Again, we have, when we talk about regularity, it's going to be regular, and then all of a sudden we get a surprise attack by some premature rhythm or beat right, which we're gonna take a look at. Now, the P wave will either be inverted or guess what, there is no P wave and it's still gonna be narrow and complex. Let's take a look at one. So we see that we have sinus rhythm here, right? Take a look, P wave, QRS complex, T wave. All of a sudden, we have a premature beat, right? We have a premature beat that occurs, kind of like throws off what's going on here. And then there's a little bit longer of a delay and it starts back up again. There is no P wave in front of this, right? There's just a little T wave here in the back, but we just have a premature junctional. And the only way I know that it's junctional is that there's no P wave in front. Now let's talk about junctional escape. Now, whenever we talk about junctional escape, it's all dependent on rate. Remember that rate Rate is going to tell you if we have junctional Brady, a junctional escape, or we have junct accelerated junctional and then junctional tack. Okay. So by looking at this rhythm, look at the rate there. That's the intrinsic rate of what? The AV node. And yeah, Zach asked a question. He says, is it called junctional because it's from the AV junction? And the answer is yes. That is what they call that for. All right, if we remember the intrinsic rate of the AV junction, it was 40 to 60. So this is a regular junctional rhythm. It's 40 to 60. P wave is gonna either be inverted, right? Or it's gonna be hidden within the QRS complex. The PRI can be measured only if the P wave uh, precedes the QRS complex, which means it's gonna be upside down, right? But we can still measure that P wave and I'm sorry, we can still measure that uh, PRI. It said it will be less than 0.12. And the QRS is still narrow. So let's take a look at this. We got a junctional escape rhythm. The only reason why I know is that this is a rate of about 40. This is really close to 50 here. Um, and there's no P waves, all right? So I know immediately that this is a junctional rhythm. You see that these are narrow QRS complexes no P waves, has to be junctional. Let's talk about accelerated junctional. Accelerated junctional is the same rate as a normal sinus rhythm, right? 60 to 100 is considered accelerated junctional. So basically this is going to look like a normal sinus rhythm, but with no P waves or the P waves are just gonna be flipped upside down, that's it. Nothing crazy about it, right? So let's take a look at it. 
same QRS width. So we have narrow QRS complex. This is a funky looking QRS. But we notice that there are no P waves in between. No P waves. Now junctional tack greater than 100, okay? Understand accelerated and junctional tack are two completely different rhythms, okay? So junctional tack, anything that's greater than 100 beats per minute, right? Again, the same rules apply. It's gotta be narrow QRS complex with no P wave or the P waves just flip, that's all. But look at these P waves, what's wrong with them? They're inverted, all right? We have these inverted P waves. All right, SVT. Now, again, what is the reason why SVT is brought up here in junctional? Let's say that we have a rhythm that is greater than 150, right? We have a really fast rhythm and I can't tell, you know, if I have a P wave or not, is it a junctional rhythm or is it an atrial rhythm? Well, if I can't tell, we call it supraventricular tachycardia. That's the rule, right? This is so squeezed in together. I see that it's upright, but I don't know if, is that a T wave? I would imagine that would be the T wave. Um, but again, you're not quite sure. Pretty straightforward. It says as a general rule, a narrow complex rhythm with a ventricular rate greater than 150 is defined as SVT until the pacemaker site is identified, right? Then we could call it atrial tachycardia, or we can call it a junctional tach, whatever the hell you want to call it. But because we don't know, we call it SVT. Easy as that. All right, let's get it. What do you guys see here? So obviously we got no P waves. What's the rate though? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine total. R waves, which makes us at a rate of 90. All right, good. Accelerated junctional. You got to know the speeds in which changes the name, right? Remember, if it's 60 to 100, it's considered accelerated. Let's take a look at this one. We got inverted P waves here. We have a rate, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. A rate of 100. This is where things get a little finicky, all right? Now, remember, anything that is greater than 100 would be considered junctional tack. Anything that is less than 100, but greater than 60 is considered accelerated. The fact that this was junctional tack is because there's going to be a B Right here at the end, it's pretty damn close. So this rate is just over 100. I know if you look at it and you only count those R waves, that's why the six second strip isn't super safe, right? Because it's not exact. Uh, understand that this, this rate would have just been over 100 beats per minute. Let's take a look at another one here. We got a rate of about 50, almost on the dot, 50 on the dot. No P waves, Zach is killing it tonight. We got a junctional escape rhythm. Remember, it's still narrow QRS complex. We got no P waves and it is less than 60, but greater than 40, All right? If it's less than 40, we would consider it junctional Brady, which we actually had a patient with junctional Brady not too long ago. All right, we have one here. We got a rate of one, two, three, four, five, six, seventy. No P waves. Pretty straightforward. Accelerated junctional again. Can we tell if it's P waves or T waves? No, we can't. Right. So we know this is SVT. Good. All right. We got a rate of forty, almost fifty and there's no P waves. You can already see how easy this is to tell what these junctional rhythms are. All, it, all that it matters is the actual rate. You just have to remember the rules. It's gotta be narrow and there, you have to pay attention to that P wave. All right, let's take a look at this one. 
Good. So it's a rate of about 140. Junctional attack. Awesome. Now, what do we got there? Looks like we got normal sinus, almost even a wandering atrial pacemaker. It's probably just not a bad looking EKG, but we got some something happening here in the middle of this EKG. We know it's a PJC. Again, the reason why I know this is a PJC is because it's narrow and complex on the QRS and there is no P wave. Awesome. Had to double it up for you, just to show you. One that, two different ones, right? Now, the only reason why this is not junctional escape with PJCs is because there are upright P waves in both of them, right? I see an upright P wave here. I see an upright P wave here. This one looks a little wonky, but there are P waves in this rhythm. Makes it sign it. Now, what's going on here? What happened to the P waves? We have inverted P's. Right, so we still have atrial contractions occurring, but they're flipped upside down, but at least they're before the QRS complexes. Our QRS complexes are still narrow. We have a rate of 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, about 100, maybe even close to just over 100. Uh, I guess not close enough, it's accelerated. <laughs> 